All right, this is just a quick short video to finish off ionic compounds in our nomenclature section for grade 11 chemistry. Um, we've dealt with type one ionic compounds that are binary. So those have just a metal element and a non-metal element, and the metal has just one possible charge on it. We also dealt with type two binary ionic compounds there, the metal had more than one possible charge, so we used Roman numerals in the name. And then er, earlier today, we learned about complex ions, so ionic compounds that have complex ions in their formulas. And today, just this last little bit, hydrated ionic compounds. So a hydrated ionic compound, sometimes just called a hydrate, is a salt that has water molecules trapped somewhere within its crystal structure, right? So ionic compounds in general are called salts. Salt that we're most familiar with is table salt, sodium chloride, but any ionic compound could be referred to as a salt. So imagine that your table salt, that's sodium chloride, imagine that within the little tiny crystals of sodium chloride, that there were water molecules trapped in there. So as it solidified, water got trapped inside the crystal structure, then you would have a hydrated version of sodium chloride. So hydrated salts have water trapped within their crystals. If you heat them, if you heat them gently with a Bunsen burner or in an oven or on a hot plate, the water that was trapped inside the crystal escapes. It turns to water vapor and escapes. When it escapes, the salt that's left is referred to as an anhydrous salt. Anhydrous, which literally means without water. All right, so now when you have a hydrated salt, there is almost always a certain number of water molecules for every formula unit of the ionic compound. So for example, down below you see copper 2 sulfate, CuSO4, in the example down below, for every CuSO4 formula unit in a crystal structure, five water molecules are trapped. So there's five water molecules for every one CuSO4 in the crystal structure. So we indicate the number of water molecules using prefixes. These prefixes should be familiar to you, most of them. If not, you'll just have to memorize them. So if there's one water molecule trapped in the crystal structure, you can see from the example, we'll call it monohydrate. When there's two water molecules trapped within the structure for every formula unit, it's a dihydrate. And then a trihydrate when there's three water molecules for every formula unit. Tetrahydrate is for four, penta for five, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca, that goes from six to 10. So make sure you know those prefixes and what number each one represents. So in the example here, if you were given the formula CuSO4, then there's a dot, like sort of not a decimal point, but a little high raised up dot, and then five H2Os. That would be the formula of the hydrated version of the copper sulfate salt. To name it, you'd, speak, you'd begin with the CuSO4. You'd recognize that copper, as we've learned, has a type two cation, it has more than one charge. So you'd write copper and then a Roman numeral for its charge. <clears throat> to figure out the charge, you look at the other ion it's bonded to. In this case, sulfate, SO4, complex ion. And you know that sulfate from page six in our data booklets has a charge of two negative. Because the sulfate's charge is two negative, the copper's charge was two positive to cancel it out. So that CuSO4 is copper two sulfate. Then we deal with the hydrate part. It has five water molecules. The prefix that meant five was penta. So pentahydrate is the rest of the name. So copper two sulfate, pentahydrate is the name of this, of this formula. The next one, let's break it down in the same way. We can see it's a hydrate because we see these waters attached at the end with this dot in the formula. So let's focus on the beginning part, the ionic compound, MgCO3. 
So that is an ionic compound. Mg is just magnesium. It does not have more than one charge. It has only one charge. It's always two positive. So therefore, we don't need a Roman numeral. CO3 is carbonate. It's a complex ion. Its charge is two minus. So MgCO3 would be magnesium carbonate. Then we see the 10 water molecules attached. So for every magnesium carbonate formula unit in the crystal structure, there's 10 waters attached. So you would add on at the end of the name, decahydrate. Deca is the prefix for 10. All right, so that's not that hard. It doesn't, it adds just a tiny extra layer to what you've already reviewed from earlier years. Here's a few examples. Pause the video for the first two, write the formulas for the next two, write their names. So the first two, copper two fluoride tetrahydrate. You should have said to yourself, copper two means copper with a two plus charge. So Cu two plus. Fluoride is a halogen, its charge is just minus, so F minus. So copper two fluoride would be CuF2. You would need two of the fluorides to cancel out the charge on the copper. So CuF2. Then you see the tetrahydrate and you realize tetra is the prefix meaning four. So you would write a dot like this and then four water molecules are associated with the copper fluoride. Calcium nitrate trihydrate. First deal with the calcium nitrate. Calcium is an alkaline earth metal with a charge of two plus. So you would write Ca2 plus. Nitrate is a complex ion. You look it up on page six in your data booklet or it's one that you've memorized. It's NO3 and it has a charge of just negative or one negative. So calcium is two positive and the nitrate is negative. That means I need two of those nitrates to cancel out calcium's charge. So we write one calcium. We put the nitrate in brackets because there's more than one of them. When you have more than one complex ion, you put it in brackets and then a two outside the brackets. So one calcium and two nitrates. But at the end, it said trihydrate. Tri is the prefix for three. So we write a dot three H2O. Done. Give the names of the next two. MgSO4, well, that's just magnesium sulfate. Magnesium is not a type two cation, so it doesn't need any Roman numeral in its name. SO4 is a complex ion, that's sulfate. And then seven water molecules, the prefix for seven was hepta. So magnesium sulfate heptahydrate. The next guy has iron at the beginning, and iron is a type two cation. It has more than one charge. Sometimes iron is two plus, sometimes it's three plus. So when we name it, we have to say which one we have here. So we see that there's two chlorides attached to the iron. Chlorides, each one has a charge of minus one or one minus. So if you have two chlorides, this iron must have a charge of two positive to cancel that out. That means that is iron two chloride, the Roman numeral two because iron is two positive. At the end, there's one water molecule attached. If there's no number in front, it's just a one. And the prefix for one was mono. So you would add on at the end, monohydrate as the ending of, the, of that name. So that is the end of ionic compounds hydrated ionic compounds. We will add, I'll put up a video on Google Classroom, a link to a video that will review um, all of this stuff on ionic compounds. Good thing for you to give that a try, but when you're reviewing with that video, be sure you're not just watching it. Be sure you have some pen and paper, your data booklet with the page six open, and you're trying each question yourself before you see me do it in the video. So good luck.